Imagine, 2,500 years ago, give or take, a dusty village, tents in a haphazard array perched along a barren ridge. People of all ages, all Jews, milling about, collecting anything they can for firewood. Candle, camels standing about or lying down, sheep with young weathered shepherds warily watching them, a few unlucky lambs roasting over the fires, sending up wafts of seared smoke, children racing about underfoot. These people are on a journey, not in this place for long as they wander in exile caused by an enemy that has ousted them from their land and destroyed their temple, leaving them no place to go. Above this din, they hear sounds, adding to the cacophony, and then the sounds become clearer as they draw near. The sounds of the horn and the trumpet and the lyre, and then of people's voices raised in song, the words become clear as the people draw near. They sing, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The villagers then hear, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth break forth into joyous song and sing praises. And then, as they get closer, let the sea roar and all that fills it, and the world and those that live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy, the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. How could the villagers do anything but join in this hymn of praise? There's a contagious delight to this scene, to the words, to the music. The priests gather, the incense is lit, more lambs are sacrificed, and no matter how dire the circumstances, a joyful cry of gratitude sounds. And oh, how universal it is, so universal that we now know this joy, sing it and appreciate it, as Psalm 98. We too sing with gratitude for God's providential support of our mission, of our people, of our past, and of our future. For all the academic focus on the Psalms, we know much less about them, for example, than the Gospels, and we rarely focus on them. We sing them, but do we actually stop and think, what do they mean in our context? Psalm 98 is one of the Christ the King or enthronement psalms. The 150 psalms in the Bible are divided into five books, Psalm 98 being in the fourth book. It appears in the lectionary three times during the year. In addition to the Christmas, sorry, the Easter season that we're in, it appears on Christmas Day, and it's the basis for the well-known hymn, Joy to the World. It's also frequently read during the Easter Vigil. The message is one of both gratitude and hope. Gratitude for the presence of God among us, alongside us, in our times of need, beginning with the villagers celebrating their release from their captors. For he has done marvelous things, and he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. They have not been forgotten. God has remembered God's promise of salvation. The gratitude extends beyond humans and out into all creation. Let the seas roar, let the floods clap their hands, let all the hills sing together for joy. This message continues in hope for us today and also in the days to come. The Lord is here among us now today to establish justice on earth. God is here among us actively setting things right. 
God boldly invites us to proclaim God's presence among us, God's salvation of all creation. And what better day for us to receive a message of gratitude and hope than the day of our annual general meeting and the day that we welcome new members into the congregation. Gratitude and hope that through growth of membership with its regeneration and new ideas, we stand stronger and more sustainable. God, gratitude for God's presence alongside us as we carry out our mission of being a vibrant worshiping community, attentive to the needs of those among us and around us. Gratitude for the traditions, the stewardship, the visionary thinking that brings us to today. Respect for tradition and culture built on courage that has given leadership for equality, including controversial matters such as gay rights in the pulpit and in marriage. Gratitude for God's presence in the individual support of our leaders, our chair, our board members and trustees, members of the committees and countless volunteers. These are the people who focus on the sustainability of our role as a worshiping community, protection and restoration of the heritage built by previous generations, and on the responses to Christian organized religion, particularly to the tensions and pressures that exist today, all within the mandate of the United Church of Canada. Their time, their sleepless nights, their absences from loved ones, and the tough judgment calls are all personal contributions by our leaders and volunteers for the good of Met. Today is a day to extend our gratitude to those who have served over this past year and those who are newly stepping up to serve. We are grateful for their collective commitment, this love of God enacted for the benefit of our in-person and online communities. While an annual meeting with its report on the previous year is a time to focus on the past year, equally, if not more important, this is a day to focus on the year to come. The psalm concludes with the acknowledgement that God is among us and will be judging the world in righteousness and the people in equity. While we usually associate righteousness as being a religious word, the Hebrew translation is simply to do the right thing. Robert Davidson said, judging the world in righteousness doesn't just mean condemning the world for its evil and corruption. It means saying yes, yes to all that will lead to finding true purpose and peace. It means putting the world right again. Easily said, but how do we apply that in our context? What is the right thing for all concerned? For those that are online and those that are in person, for those that have been here for decades and those who join today. What is the right thing to do to ensure that we are a sustainable future worshiping community while compassionately responding to those who are here among us? How do we harness the energy that arises among these tensions for the betterment of the congregation. Equity, by which the psalm says we are also judged, is the English translation of the Hebrew word yeshar, meaning upright, straight to the point. We're called to judge, to lead with clear equality for all and a firm sense of what is right and wrong, to lead with integrity, with discernment of how to guide us through the contentious issues of climate change, reconciliation, poverty, and other social determinants of health that lead to inequity. Within our own congregation, it means leadership that strikes a balance between the needs of our current members and our next generation of members, to wrestle with what is sustainable to provide for a worshiping community 10 or 20 years from now 
while fully supporting those who are among us today. This challenge to us is framed within an overall message in the psalm of celebration and of hope that God, who has offered steadfast love for generations, is here among us, ensuring that we do not lead, we do not follow alone. Psalm 98 sings the joy of all creation, offers us the embrace, the embrace of all creation as we discern with love, with joy, with equality, how we make our way into the future. God is here alongside us, to celebrate our actions, to offer us confidence and courage, to bring us joy with song accompanied by horns and trumpets raised. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. And we hear this music further from our choir.